Hey everybody. Hi. Thanks for coming back. Um, so for this video, uh, we've got Atomic Roosters VUG. I don't know what that means. And it looks like it was in the B Club, meaning this, I think this is one of those like silent audience kind of things or something, kind of in a TV studio, 1970. How cool is that? Um, and um, fittingly, I didn't, not good enough with technology to plan this, but we start with a frame on Vincent Crane, who was the centerpiece of Atomic Rooster for uh, all those years. Um, sadly, I think he was about my age when he um, committed suicide. Um, he had bipolar and um, struggled a lot with depression and things related to being bipolar. Um, but what a record of music he left. A lot of people don't particularly know him, uh, but he was involved in lots of other projects and he is the keyboardist. And I've mentioned in other videos, but Atomic Rooster, uh, their lineup changed over times, but most of the time it was a three person group. Um, I believe without a bassist because Vincent Crane could cover that the bass line with his um, keyboard playing skills. So this is one of my favorite songs of theirs. I feel like it's one of their least known ones. Um, I realize almost everybody out there doesn't know any Atomic Rooster song, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorites and it's, um, it's purely instrumental. Um, so let's get to it. Let's uh, enjoy this together. John Dukong, uh, lead guitars, and usually the vocalist here. He was not always the vocalist for Atomic Rooster. Um, and I don't know who the drummer is, but early Atomic Rooster has Carl Palm Palmer of Emerson Lake and Palmer fame was their drummer. So I don't know if that's him or not. Maybe somebody could tell us. <laughs> shows like it's pretty neat actually the focusing in and out background foreground and like the way that they can focus in on the symbols on the drum set and different people um, pretty good for 1970 in my mind <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
almost reminds me of a like just sort of a garage jam. This is a kind of song I know they're playing in front of a television audience or at least a television camera. But um, this is a kind of song like live. It seems like could just go on and on. And you could have variations on. And if I was an artist uh, like these guys and so many others that was always traveling and performing shows all over, you know, Europe and uh, North America or wherever. Um, I would like this kind of song because I feel like I could continue to be creative within it. Whereas if, if you have um, usually songs with lyrics um, or uh, one of your top couple songs, you probably have a lot of pressure to play those songs the way they sound on the record or the way everyone's used to them. Whereas this kind of song, I think you could just, you know, reminds me a little bit of um, Metallica would do that some. They would just kind of break into these long, really cool instrumental <laughs> sections that nobody heard before and nobody has heard since and you just had to be there for. <laughs> anyway, this is the kind of song I think would be fun to do that with. <laughs> played instruments. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know some people still do. Uh, yeah, so I realize that's not everybody's cup of tea, but I love it. Uh, these guys will always hold a special place in my heart <laughs> uh, because I like, I like some experimental music. I like a little bit of um, jazz. I, I hear a little bit of a jazz influence in there. Um, and again, I love, I mean, I love all the musicians here, but this is this is keyboard driven Vincent Crane classic songwriting, and I love it. I, I love it. I love it. All right. I hope you guys got some value out of it, or possibly even enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace. <laughs>